I, I usually start talking to my uh, undergraduates in uh, history of thought by uh, having them look at the first sentences of The Wealth of Nations, because Adam Smith talks about uh, aggregate consumption is, is what's going to be the topic of the wealth of nations and uh, per capita consumption. Uh, and uh, the point there is that measuring national income is uh, an old activity. It wasn't invented by uh, Simon Kuznets. There are estimates from the uh, 17th century, the 18th century. Um, I, I didn't put this in the paper, but uh, two of the early estimates in the U.S., which were very well done, Bob Gallman uh, praised them. They're based on the uh, census data, were by George uh, Tucker, a Southerner, and Ezra Seaman, a Northerner. They weren't uh, concerned very much about welfare. What they were concerned about was the relative strength of the free states and the, uh, and the slave states. And I'll sort of come back to that when we get to uh, Simon Kuznets and uh, World War II. Uh, what actually caused the, uh, sparked the formation of the Bureau was, as Jim pointed out, uh, the rise in inequality in the, in the progressive era. Uh, uh, the uh, labor is saying that uh, these robber barons are creating great inequality of income. There are people on the other side uh, saying we can't be sure about that. There's a lot of innovation going on. Uh, in 1915, two books are published, uh, and I think there's a very strong uh, parallel with uh, Piketty. One was by uh, Scott Nearing and the other by uh, Wilford uh, King. Uh, Nearing was a socialist uh, who looked at the ratio of the property income to labor income and thought it was uh, uh, way too high, too much property income. Uh, Wilford King, who will become part of the Bureau in the early days, wrote a book that uh, uh, we would recognize the methodology today. He, he uh, calculated uh, real wages of different classes of workers. Uh, he plotted Lorenz curves. In fact, he was one of the first users of uh, the Lorenz curve. His, uh, uh, it was a colleague, uh, Lorenz was a colleague at uh, Wisconsin. Uh, what he'd found is that between the turn of the century and 1910 and a little bit later, uh, wages of the lowest skilled workers had fallen. Uh, he blamed that on immigration, basically, and said a lot of things about immigration that wouldn't be very popular today. And uh, <laughs> he also uh, uh, found a rising inequality of income and wealth, which he uh, blamed on the robber barons. Uh, this is uh, King on uh, what's causing the inequality of income it's these uh, monster corporations. That's what's, uh, that's what's doing it. Uh, just, uh, I just uh, included this figure, it's Piketty's uh, uh, figure. It's, of course, been criticized a lot. Richard Such criticized some of the early estimates. But you can see that the uh, uh, inequality reaches a peak in, uh, in 1910, which is exactly the year that King is, uh, is talking about. So here are the two founders of the uh, NBR that uh, uh, Jim mentioned, Malcolm Rorty, a business economist, and uh, Stone, a uh, uh, socialist. I couldn't find a picture that I was sure was Nahum Stone. <laughs> So this is his first book, a translation of uh, an early uh, book by uh, Karl Marx. Uh, St uh, Rorty, I'd say, was very impressed because Stone wrote a, uh, a review of uh, Nearing's book uh, and uh, complained about it, said Nearing was uh, not putting in all the sources of labor income that he should have. He was estimating too high a ratio. And that uh, persuaded Rorty that this was somebody that he could really uh, work with. Uh, in 1917, they form the Committee on the Distribution of Income with prominent uh, economists and some uh, business people on it. Uh, that's really the first name of the Bureau, the Committee on the Distribution of Income. 
Uh, after it was formed, they changed the uh, uh, name of the Bureau to what we know today, the National Bureau, uh, because uh, some of the people on the committee wanted the Bureau to do business cycle research. There had been financial panic in 1907, uh, another one in 1914 when World War I broke out. Uh, unemployment had spiked after those uh, financial panics, uh, and uh, there was a lot of uh, concern about it. Uh, the war intervenes, and in 1920, uh, the Bureau is uh, incorporated. There's money from private donors and uh, later on from uh, uh, the Carnegie Corporation. This is uh, Mitchell, uh, the first uh, director of the NBER. He had written an important book on uh, the business cycle and uh, had uh, used a lot of data in that, so he was a natural uh, choice as director. Uh, but the first study uh, is, uh, as Jim mentioned, on the uh, uh, income in the United States, its amount in distribution. Right? It's by uh, uh, Mitchell and King, who's now been brought into the Bureau, uh, and uh, Macaulay and Nuff. Uh, it is a, uh, a, a big book, bit bigger than anything that uh, a Nearing or a uh, even uh, King could do just in their uh, at their desk in their in their study. Right? You needed a team to do that. The uh, estimating national income from the you know the two sides of the circular flow was one of the things they were proud of. Uh, it was uh, widely praised. Uh, all the uh, the reviews that I've read suggest that everybody thought this was a milestone. And it's updated then at the end of the 30s by King and uh, Epstein, William Epstein. This is uh, Simon Kuznets. Uh, uh, Kuznets comes to the United States. I, 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 have to, I have to tell you, I gave a paper about some of this in Tokyo. And I pointed out that Kuznets was uh, my intellectual grandfather and was from Hingst in uh, Belarus and that my biological grandfather was also from Pinkst. And uh, it didn't seem to interest the uh, <laughs> audience there in the, in the slightest, and, and uh, I guess doesn't interest you either. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So now comes the, uh, the Great Depression. Uh, uh, Senator La Follette wanted uh, the government to turn out estimates of national income to show how uh, uh, bad things were. And uh, Kuznets is seconded to the uh, Commerce Department to lead a team to, to uh, create the first estimates. Right. Um, this is somebody who you probably uh, may not know, Robert Nathan. He was a student of Kuznets. He... Uh, uh, is brought in as part of the team at the Commerce Department, and then after Kuznets leaves and comes back to the Bureau, Nathan takes over the uh, Bureau at the Commerce Department and updates the uh, evidence on uh, national income and writes the reports for the survey of current business. Uh, Roosevelt immediately recognizes the importance of these national income estimates. This is... Uh, uh, just a, a quick uh, couple of comments from uh, one of his campaign speeches in 1936, and he's pointing out, uh, I wish I could put in more of it, he's pointing out how national income had fallen uh, under Hoover, and now because of his policies, national income is rising. And he just grasped immediately that national income is a, a quick summary of the state of the economy and, and important as a uh, political variable. Um, after uh, World War II starts, we have another crisis. Uh, Kuznets goes uh, then to the uh, War Production Board. Uh, Nathan, his protege, has become uh, chair of the planning committee of the War Production Board, which was supposed to maximize uh, production. Uh, he appoints Kuznets as the chief uh, uh, statistician of his uh, commission. Uh, and they become very concerned that the Army and Navy are just uh, uh, issuing too many uh, contracts, that uh, consumption will be reduced too far, 
that there'll be congestion in, in various product markets and that production will actually be slowed down. Uh, it's just not feasible to issue as many contracts as the Army and Navy want. And uh, uh, there's a compromise. Uh, Roosevelt agrees to reduce the amount of money that the Army Navy Munitions Board can, uh, can spend. Uh, you know, it's hard to know exactly what would have happened if they had been allowed to spend as much as they wanted. But uh, Mike Edelstein, who's a very uh, distinguished economic historian, thinks that uh, uh, the Kuznets uh, and Nathan intervention was important. And uh, Jim Lacey, who's a military historian, wrote a, a, a book which is immediately convincing when you uh, read the title, How U.S. Economists. <laughs> won World War II. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention is that Kuznets, in, in all of his writing, even going back uh, to that original Commerce Department report, uh, stressed that uh, uh, national income was uh, uh, not a good measure of, uh, uh, of national welfare. And he always thought about all the various ways that uh, uh, national income could be, uh, or, or GNP or whatever, could be modified to make it a better measure of, uh, of welfare. Um, some of the problems, of course, are home production. Uh, that was noted in the uh, first uh, NBR study. They noted that uh, production in the home was not being measured, and they made estimates of, of how much that might be. Um, and uh, Kuznets talked about the distribution of income. This is one uh, 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 quote from him where he's talking about how uh, the prices that we're using are influenced by the distribution of income, and we got to think of some way of uh, uh, adjusting for that. Um, one of the, the main uh, sort of philosophical issues that, that uh, worried Kuznets was whether we should count military spending uh, as uh, part of GNP, right? And uh, so now we're kind of circling back to Tucker and, and uh, Seaman. Uh, uh, Kuznets kind of finally agreed that in World War II, where the safety of the nation was at issue, we should count military spending as part of national income. But in peacetime, he thought, uh, it should not be in there. It's just an intermediate uh, good for, uh, uh, leading up to the production of, of goods and services for the uh, uh, consumer. Uh, and, uh, but this was an issue where he basically failed. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, estimates of the Commerce Department, the ones we use today, all include government spending, military spending as part of uh, national uh, uh, income. And I have kind of a discussion in the paper about why uh, he lost that uh, debate. Part of it, of course, is the Cold War. Uh, uh, suddenly it seemed like military power was going to be important all the time, not just in uh, uh, an all-out war. Um, I did a little bit of work in the paper comparing some of the early uh, NBR estimates with the ones that uh, we use today. Uh, maybe I think, I, I guess I tried to put a little bit too much maybe in this one uh, uh, figure here. But you can see uh, that the, uh, if you look at the national income and product accounts today, the 1920s and, and 30s, uh, 1930s look pretty much the same as they did for uh, uh, Kuznets and the Bureau. Uh, in World War II, the estimates diverge a little bit. Uh, this estimate here is by Friedman and Schwartz. These are, I should say, net national product estimates, which uh, Kuznets always preferred to work with. Uh, the Friedman estimates are a little bit lower because he's adjusting for what he thinks is uh, evasion of price controls during World War II. Uh, and then, as you can see in the uh, post-war period, the um, uh, modern chain-linked uh, GDP estimates uh, diverge because you're constantly updating the uh, 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 price base. 
but in the early years, the, the early national product estimates uh, stand up, I think, as well as they did. Uh, so uh, just to kind of recap a little bit, I think it's rising inequality, the problem of inequality that led to the formation of the Bureau. Uh, the solution was uh, a uh, nonpartisan agency, uh, first the Committee on the Distribution of Income and the NBR. And uh, I, I think they did a good job, Mitchell, King, and Epstein, and oh, that's the end of my, my story. But I think they did a good job. So